Stock trading indicators are important for system trading because they objectify your rule set. They give you defined areas in which you should enter and defined areas in which you should exit trades. So in today's video, we are going to be going over how to implement studies into your ThinkScript code. By the end of this episode, you will know how to implement any study into a back-tested code so that you can begin testing whether or not your systems are profitable. Hit the like button if you're excited. Make sure you're subscribed. Over 40% of the people that watched episode one aren't subscribed. So they might not even get this episode. If you want to continue learning about ThinkScript, make sure you are subscribed. So if we go ahead and open the code from episode one, if you haven't seen episode one, this is going to look like Chinese to you. Make sure you hit that link up in the top right corner. Go watch episode one. Catch back up with this here. But let's go ahead and open the code from episode one. I just closed a little reference window over there by clicking on reference, by the way. Um, and remember that we have a code that is buying when the RSI is under 30, selling when the RSI is over 70. And we implemented last code or, or the focus of last code, should I say, was the add order function. Well, the studies here are obviously RSI. The study, should I say, we used it twice, but just like the add order function studies are also functions that's why you have open and closed parentheses here well trey in add order you added in different parameters to get it to work so why is this rsi working if it's just blank every study has default parameters and it's what you think of when you think of the study you think of rsi you think of this rsi but at the end of the day a, an indicator is just a type of calculation you can use any parameters you want to within that calculation and that's where you begin testing right that's where you start to be able to update this code to be able to test what works best for your strategy by manipulating these parameters so what we're going to do i'm actually going to add in something first since these are our let's do a little code talk here since these are our buy and sell uh, calls you have to anything you're going to define that you're going to use within these have to be above it the code does read top down so if i were to define something down here uh, and then try to use it in my buy or sell it would throw an error so let's go ahead and define a new study up top I'm going to leave the RSI as they were so that you all have a working example of just what a default uh, default studies look like. And instead, we are going to add a new study. I'm going to define a moving average and we are going to set it equal to uh, the moving average call for, for an SMA, for a simple moving average, a simple moving AVG. And what did I just explain? All studies are functions. What do functions need? Functions need parameters. They need to accept parameters in order to work. So if we just open and close parentheses, bada bing, bada boom, you have a defaulted parameter simple moving average. A little bit more coding talk. I kind of skipped over this last episode, but uh, you may have noticed that at the end of each one of my lines, I was putting semicolons. That's how you let the machine know that you are done with that line of code. And that's why you're seeing errors right now, because if you don't have this, it thinks that code is still running. It thinks these are blurred together. Uh, the, the machine doesn't see spacing and stuff uh, that's all just for to make it look better for you so without this it thinks you're trying to def like run this into this which doesn't work so make sure you're putting your semicolons at the end of your definitions as well so now we have a simple moving average the simple moving average default length out of the box is nine you all know different moving average lengths you've heard them all 920 uh, 200 300 whatever people are utilizing uh and i'm going I'm, well, I'm about to show you right now how you change that so actually let's let's start here first and so that you all can see this yes save the changes to my code sorry um if i add a simple moving average so let's actually add the study itself and i click on the cog of that study here are the parameters of the study here here is what the simple moving average per uh, simple moving average study sorry is accepting as parameters one of those the most important kind of the only important one in this one is length so that's the that's the indicator that sorry that's the parameter there's too many words uh <laughs> that we are going to be updating in our code also you can find this in the think script helped guide which will be linked in the description down below we'll go back into this in a second so that i can teach you all how to implement any study you want uh this is not going to be just a simple moving average video this is an all studies video but there are thousands of studies so i want to show you all how you can uh just teach you all how to implement parameters then send you off on yourself to figure that out for your own individual studies um we now have a 200 sma defined in our system 
Now what? Great. It's just defined. Nothing's going to change now. If I hit apply, you'll notice nothing changed. All we've done was define it, right? But why did I put it above the buy here? Let's use it in the buy. Let's say buy when the RSI is under 30 and and why did I type uh why did I type moving average cross I think it like average I think it auto filled that for me earlier and I didn't recognize sorry uh I want it just to be named moving average uh let's set it to define by equals RSI is under 30 and um and the close that means the close of the current candle we're starting to get into a little bit of price action stuff now this is very simple price action stuff, but there's going to be more how to use price action in, in your thing script in the future. But uh, so the close of the current candle is over moving average. We defined our 200 SMA, gave it a name of moving average. So now that's how we call it later in the code. So now it's only going to buy, yes, if the RSI is below 30, but also if that bar closes over the 200 SMA. So realistically, we're saying, uh, let's buy when SPY is weak, when it's currently down, but maybe it's not in too big of a downtrend. It's kind of the idea, right? And once again, this is the point of utilizing studies in trading. You can't just say things like, well, I'm going to buy SPY when it's down, but not when it's in downtrend. How do you test that? You can't really objectively test that. That's why we use the indicators here, right? Uh, we don't have to do anything else to our add orders. It's already still just calling the buy function. Uh, and the buy function is what we have defined here. And all we did was add to that. Uh, so we are good to go with that. So if I hit add now, I want to change this plot to the 200 SMA so we can just get an idea. Uh, you will now see... Well, you will now have seen the the p l change and you will see that areas like this like where the rsi was below 30 and below the 200 sma there was now no longer a buy let's go back to when spy was really down trending here you can see so it's kind of keeping you out of this now is what the code is doing it is making slightly less money overall but it's taking less trades and it has a lower drawdown i'm sure we haven't tested that and we'll get into how to do that later um but it's protecting your it's protecting your downside risk now, the strategy is, right? Which is important. In backtesting, it's not really important just what the gross p l is. There's a lot of other things, right? Because backtesting is just working on the past stagnant data. Anybody can make any strategy produce a high PL on past stagnant data that already exists, right? We already know this data exists. The goal of backtesting is to create the most efficient trades, the highest average PL, because that is what's gonna protect you from max drawdowns and stuff in the future. We'll get into more of this as we get into more backtesting and how to actually run your backtest in the future and future videos uh, in this series, but I, I, I'm, I rant and I digress right now. You can see that our code, our simple moving average with a length of 200 with our change parameter is now limiting the entrances. It's not buying here, it's not buying here, it didn't buy here because we're below the 200 SMA, right? So that's how to implement studies with parameters into your code. Now, Trey, great, simple moving average, that's great. There's all kinds of other studies. How do I find those other studies? Well, using the ThinkScript helped guide, well, once, once again, will be linked in the description down below. It's straight from Thinkorswim. This is their official guide. This is not uh, something I put together or anything like that. Uh, if you look in technical indicators off here to the right, and then you look into studies library, this is going to show you every study out there. Say you want to use the ADX, you use ADX in your strategy or use the ATR. I know what ATR is. Uh, you use the ATR. Well, it's going to give you your parameters. So these are the length and average type. These are the ex like what I just typed in with simple moving average was the length. So if you want to use a study and you want to implement parameters into it, use this guide find your study say i want to use uh i can't even think of anything off the top of my head let's uh stochastics i want to use the stochastics well inside the studies library uh stochastic fool is the one that i want to use now i can see this has a lot of parameters all of these parameters can be changed once again if you add stokes to your chart uh that doesn't mean anything right just the stochastic is just the stochastic this is just what it is out of the box blah -dee blah you can change all of this just like you can in here you can change all of these parameters to be anything else you want to and that's how you begin testing that's how you start to recognize what works best for you so it's impossible for me to sit here and to go over every study i wish i could but the goal the goal of this series is to teach you how to fish so now you know 
how studies are implemented that studies are functions that how you need to define them ahead of your by statements in order to use them um you know what parameters are you know where to find the parameters for the study and you can begin messing around with that if you don't get it at first if it's if it's tough or whatever keep at it that's what coding is learning coding is a lot of trial and error if you do have any questions please let me know in the comment section down below but so now you have studies you understand that studies are functions you understand how to define those studies and then you understand how to implement them into your buys so that they are being implemented onto your chart into your code that you can begin to back test so hopefully you did find this video uh helpful hopefully it's helpful in some way it can get you to start to implement studies into your code if you did please hit the like button once again if you're new around here make sure you're subscribed so that you don't miss any other episodes in this series we will continue teaching we will continue teaching you all how to utilize code to the best of your ability to back test and prove that approve a profitable system before you just start blindly trading with that being said i'm gonna go ahead and sign out of this video i will catch you all in the next one